Apologies there, folks. Just had to grab a quick drink because the throat was feeling very, very wonky. Anyhow, we have a map known as Volcano Beach. And one of the unique features about this map, really unique, is the volcano. Ah, you see, it's a volcano. It's, uh, it's burning, it's smoking, it's a volcano. Yes, it's an active volcano. I'll show you why shortly. Let's introduce teams anyway. We have team one here at the top. We have team two down at the bottom. Let's have a look at the how they're going to go here. And our front position is Saurian AI. He's light blue. He is Siren beside him. We have a Rubberduck. Rubberduck is also Siren. And he is red beside them on the front line. It is Alex666. Fix is there. And anyway, he is UEF and he is in orange. In the rear guard air position, it is a UF dog. Yuff Dog is pink, Yuff Dog is Aeon, and beside him in the navy position, being close to the water, it is Rion. Rion's also Aeon, Rion's grey. And there was an early disconnect here, I'm guessing something was wrong, people complaining about the connection that he had, but Hatchy is out of the game nice and early, so it won't have a huge effect on the rest of it. Anyway, the other mid here, it is Superior Catman. He's Cybran, he's white, besides Superior Catman, the other front slot is Killer, Killer Shed, Kill EA Shed, Kill EA Shed, that's how I'm going to pronounce it anyway, it's going to be Kill, and he's purple, he is Aeon, the Navy slot for Team 2, it is Avaran, he's also Aeon in Lime Green, and finally the Air slot is Strife, and Strife is UEF in just plain old green, so we mentioned the uh, Volcano, we have a look at the Reclaim stats, you see these little bits of 150 all over the place, including off the map. That's come from the volcano. So, um, yes, it does act, it is actually an active volcano. And it will actually, it does actually launch out projectiles. These projectiles land, these projectiles do damage, and then they can be reclaimed for 150 mass. So, it's going to kind of watch that. It's about to pop. A lot of activity out of there, a lot of smoke, a lot of items, and it's very randomized, so it could go anywhere. Go on. Must be close. So much going on in the map, so we'll just watch this have an explosion out of its guts. to do this to me. Little watch things in the background there, see people are kind of going around. We heard a couple of shots, so maybe some some scouts over that way. You would explosion in the background there. That's uh people having seen some things up. Right at the base there, gonna see another explosion in the background. Pop. Maybe pop in the distance. Right, it's not gonna play ball. Never mind. See, there's a flare going to be chased down by Mendes, or it's going to get away. And I swear, it's going to be close. Too close to popping out. Anyway, that flare has gotten away. It's going to have, we have free reign to knock on some engineer doors, and the base here has been cannibalized already by teammates. You're not going to leave it alone, and they have split it evenly between Superior and Strife. Right, early up the front is Kill EA Shed, and he's wanted to grab some of this mid reclaim of this comm. He's got a bomber flying over. That's going to be looking for some engineers to kill, and we see a T1NG up on top of the there from Rion. So he's going to do that. Uh, transport is going to get locked onto and shot down, unfortunately. Not going to get the rest of the NGs off unless it stops and drops it down. There we go. Okay, now having a spares. Out fly the projectiles, and they are on their way across the map and you have a look at what they do. They go all over the place, they land, they cause damage and turn into 150 reclaim. So if you can get those, it's gonna just help boost your eco that little bit. Jeff from sorry and AR looking to grab some mass but gonna get picked off by a mantis. Although if he moves away it could survive. No, never mind he did. It's following. And with that transport Yeah got shot down. There it is sinking to the bottom of the ocean. 
All right, bomber out. Not going to get a lot done owing to the uh, scouts ahoy and interceptors in the area. Although, no, it's found. Because I managed to sneak past, it might have been able to pick up an engineer, but not going to have that much luck. All right, couple of minutes down here, still having fun. They are in a bit of retreat though. Running two minutes of their own. I hear commander fire, and that is Kili killer, killer, eh? And okay, Alex is walking away with his commander, even though ah uh, two v one. That is Avaran, so two comms for team two in the mid, grabbing a reclaim. In the meantime, we have a drop. It's happened to both things actually. We have you have to all up here, getting this section down there. Why is there a ping going on? A belated ping and that drop has already happened. The engineers are down. You can now claim this tiny wee plateau. Could even pop down a factory and turn it into a sizable fortress. That's going to be difficult to remove. Front wires. Well, that's a bit of pressure coming up from Avaran and only a few units left there to stop him. You meant it's going to face off against Aurora's, but they have range as long as they have radar. Radar. Have they got radar? Oh, there it is. I was wondering. Alright, raid attempt here from Rubberduck, Rubber but that's going to amount to pretty much nothing. Because we have a chasing force down here from Spirit, but if they keep moving, they could take out a radar unless they decide to friendly fire. That Zeus just knocked out a friendly radar. That's hilarious, but. So, job done for these guys, and they kill off a couple of engineers, so that factory does not get built. Gonna require a few engines to drop back from this direction to help us. Okay, engines grabbing up mass extractors, of course, we have a frigate wandering its way on in, so they won't last too long once it arrives. And factory is popping out engines, but uh, engines can't fight frigates. Big question is will it finish off the mass extractor? The answer is no! Four health off completing that. That frigate was just one shot slightly slower. An eco. As this command is going to shoot away these guys quite heavily. Although it doesn't want to keep pushing too much because of course Aurora's outrange the comm. Gun upgrade on the way for Saurian, tucked in under the volcano. Wanting to keep himself hidden, keep himself safe. Down here these engineers are still very much alive. Bomber throws his payload down on well, that's a cheeky boss. Might be a cheeky boss. You know, they're going to repair that because, hey, why not? And I'll throw down a factory. Factory's a bit harder to kill. And what that will also achieve is being able to reinforce the position, being able to get some tech on there. Could throw some TTWNGs down and uh, you know, upgrade it. Chuck down some TTWNGs and pop some shields on and just deny this corner of the map to anybody else. In the midsection, we see it is Alex with a gun upgrade going up against Killer. Uh, Killer does not have gun, and that was a good overcharge, knocking down three units, and he's actually in trouble now. Running out of units of his own, and with Alex in the region, his health is going to drop pretty quickly. He's got nothing there to help out, but come with the units from Avaran, and that may cause Alex to drop back if he sees them, which he does. So as much as he wants to try and get the kill there, he's not going to do it at the sacrifice of his own commander, which it probably would be. And uh, he pulls the comm back. Unfortunate, but he can now hold the mid area. Can grab all the reclaim, kill off the factories, and have a good time on that front. Okay. Bombs ahoy. This is Avaran just throwing out a T1 bomber to try and get down some extra damage. Um, of course, yeah. Aeon frigates are very role specific. Frigate anti navy. Shard to actually kill any. Air and then the shark can't shoot any uh, naval units, so the very, very one dimensional, but they work. All right, we have Killer Shield now getting gun upgrade on his own commander under a shield and a flex, so he'll be okay on under there. Uh, we see this is anti air being stepped down by Alex, who's probably going to want to get some tech up front, but um, he's going to lose some units to that. Gun upgrade has been done and is stealth going down for Saurian, so he's going to be a nuisance on that front. True from Cyber Commanders, as they basically do. Right, 
down here and what was the T1PD been plonked right on the edge of the surface hose so anything that comes in range of that is going to get mailed more on and this is a T1RD which will still be able to outrange it even though it's up above in the corner though lost this little wee island there is an engine tucks itself right into the corner but uh, not going to be fooled by that it is Averan and he's sending a frigate up there go okay Rion, with T2 on his commander, is walking up towards the front all by his lonesome. Could be the victim of a unit push if he's not too careful. The TMD is the first thing down. What's the reasoning behind that? I don't see any launches, he just doesn't want to lose it. And down this side we see T2 for Superior Catman. And, uh, the vice push coming in from Rubberduck, just throwing away some units here as they want into some Cerberus turret. Of course, Cerberus turrets notoriously for shooting the ground, because as we say, fuck the ground. Yeah, alright, and this is Saurian with a gun stealth comm, and he's going to be causing some issues. Disappears. So, visual range only. This comm won't show up on radar, which means it's going to do some extra damage. And we see, as we mentioned, you can step down some Lobos T1 RD and they're going to take down the point defense easily. But that factory event happened. The factory's there and popping out some of his own T1 RD. Okay. Small run by attempt again from Rubber Duck. Uh, turns back, though. Probably wanted to just keep on going, but uh, they're not going to get any further. Oh, I take that back. It was attack launcher that uh, Rion was making, so I apologise, I thought it was tech defence, I completely misinterpreted the icon, and away we go with the missiles and targeting. This way, going for the mixes this way, is he going for the HQ, how far can that reach? The answer is a long way, and I think he's actually going for the Navy HQ, and that we need three missiles to deal, to deal with. One, two, three. And uh, if Avaran's not paying attention, that is going to be his HQ down, and that is actually not a bad move. It's going to take him out of the T2 nav game, the amount of. And in fact, he control K's it, and starts just reclaiming the mass, and upgrading a different factory perhaps? Maybe not. But anyway, that's the T2 factory down. Why not? Take your opponent out of the Navy any means necessary. And what is the launcher going for now? Maybe now it's going to go for some mass, although the angle that suggests no. I think he just lobbed it again at where the HQ was. Or he's gone for the other one. Went for. Well, he killed an engineer. That guy had a horrible time. Imagine being a T1 engine, just minding your own business, and an attack missile comes out of nowhere and obliterates you. Poor guy. Alright, TMD is going up though, so everyone doesn't want this to happen to his next factory, which is on the upgrade. And looks like that attack missile... Ah, uh, yeah. TMD there, and is that right at hell? Either way, it's not going to get any further work done. Might as well control cat and reclaim it for the mass. I mean, I guess you could fire it in a different direction. Is there a TMD down here? No, there is. Oh, yeah, there is. All right, looking pretty solid in the middle over here. Uh, Catman is just got himself a little bit of a forward base. He's got a T2 RD. He's got a flak, got a radar, got some TMD, and he's popping down some more Cerberus Towers to help hold that position. Checking down over this way, it is sorry in AI though, with that really, really irritating, stealthy cyber and com. And uh, he's just picking off units. He's got to be careful though, because Strife is nearby with his own commander. And he actually has Nano, which is going to help him survive a whole lot better than Saurian. Both gun comps, so both dealing out the extra damage, but with the Nano repair, Strife is going to regen way faster than Saurian does, even though he's Cybran. Have a look at that. Oh, it's absolutely worth it. And uh, 
Not looking great. Fasorian down with the yellow, under 7,000. Strife is trying to keep up with him. Of course, he has to keep him in visual range to be able to shoot him, but that's no drama now. And Kaji shoots away, but that's a broadsword. So Strife has actually made his way into the T3 game. And that is a broadsword having to go at Sorin, and Sorin is now in desperate measures. Desperate times, he's down into the red, and that broadsword is doing a ton of damage, and there's not enough to stop it. There any air whatsoever, or there is, but it's far, far too late. Broadsword does die, but not till after. Sorin himself is dead, but Strife has to be a wee bit careful. Oh, I'd say a wee bit careful, he's got 5,000 health. And there isn't really anything around to stop him, but hello. Massive T1 push coming in from Rubberduck and Alex, and they are rushing the position of Catman, and of course, those Cerberus Turrets very happily shooting the ground because, hey, we love to rain, they say. In fact, they love it so much they just want to shoot it over and over and over again. But this is letting the units from these guys just charge right on in and start making a mess of everything. Question is, is there enough to kill Catman? He has got reinforcements of his own coming in of course and some here doing a bit of a cut off from the Rubberduck's forces. T2 in the mix here as well and plenty of T1 PD being spammed down which is really going to help thin out the numbers. And I think they're dwindling as the volcano has another go at basically anything. I want to see that land on something, but it didn't. Well, that meant it's got hit. Explosion. So this position is basically demolished. Plenty of reclaim though, and actually Superior Catman has remained in the vicinity. So he's going to want to grab all that reclaim. His forces have tied it up. The T1 PD has been fantastic at helping shoot this Push away and call subsidians here from this is teammate. Don't know if that was worth the push it could have taken it perhaps. Had they just rushed in and focused down the comm, I think that would have been a different story. That tech launcher is still going. Still there, still going, and still killing. Oh, you see a mass extractor? Now you see it? No, you don't. Alright, in the pond, how's it looking there? Well, that is T2 in the water here from Rion, and his opponent does have T2 back here, starting on to destroy it, but that's his first one. This guy's a bit of free reign to. Oh no, he has got to destroy him up. Be a wee bit careful, does Rion. Okay, T3 is now up for Yurfdog, but he's quite behind. And, and Everan's actually doing some Torp Bombers, so. Wanted to help out his teammate in Navy who is absolutely up against it. Let's see if these destroyers won't survive too much longer. Frigate fire, there's enough of it. All we'll take this one down and of course there is a destroyer back here which can add its firepower in. Maybe, but now we have a cruiser out. So we're going to need a few extra torp bombers to do some damage over there. Now the death of Sorian AI has left this big gap. Just ripe for units to push on through and start doing some damage. I would personally probably consider popping some PD around here. It's a bit of a choke point, so they'd have to go closer to it. This was an ambitious effort, but is not going to complete. Too little, too late on that front. I'm going to see the death of NGs, and that is not going to complete. Upgrading a mix on the front line. How very brave. How very foolhardy. It's not going to and again, this is all T1. There's enough of it. Here we go. T1 PD going up over that way. Ooh, a frigate inadvisedly wanders into range of a couple of destroyers. Not going to end well for that guy. Right, this spot down here. More fervors coming out. No. Stop that. Go D2. You've got a couple of T2 mixes here you want to protect. Alright, T2 ID is back up here and running, ready to go. We have Vipers lobbing their missiles out, and they're just gonna gradually munch the forces of Rubberduck. There's some TMD here, but of course, Cyber missiles are annoying. Ah, oh, missed. I was hoping for a hit. No, there wasn't a hit. That's fine. 
units have pushed way up the side here, and yes, indeed, that makes it not complete. But they're on their way, that's actually a pillar as well, so they're going to be able to wander on past, cause a good bunch of damage. Uh, T1 PD is going to have a grand old time with the RT moving in range. Shells do come over though, and oh, that's all she wrote for the pillar. And now some Aurora's can clean up the T1 RD as well as Jester. That's all well and good. This is that the attack launcher still up, still doing this thing? Go for this time. Mass extractor over here. Slowly weaving his way through and pop. What's he got now? Nine kills. Uh, maybe it's been effective. Maybe. In the middle, this is a push up from the killer shed who has a a single gun, a T2 shield comm, and is doing some good damage up here. There's just simply not enough to slow those down. Not much to my ground point defense. There are some triers trying to do their thing, but with the gun comm, with the uh, obsidians, with basically everything else, you want to be slapped down some T1 PD at this stage. And you can see the triads just simply melt out. Now the triad here, and watch it as it goes. We overcharge the moment and it'll be the end of that thing. There we go. See you later. And this middle position has been absolutely overrun. There are a bunch of units in it from Rubberduck, and while they seem to be shooting at the commander, it's probably the wrong idea. You want to filter out the units so that uh, you know there's nothing there to support them. That will usually make them fall back. As it is, they're not going to get a lot done by focusing, trying to focus them down. They're going to be wiped out by the units instead. Up here and Rion decides, um, um, nah, let's not do that. Even now, there's another push. So, that is units coming up the middle section here from those guys as well. So, pushing all over the place. Push in the mid here, push on this mid side over here. The only stronghold at the moment appears to be Navy, where Rion is doing a good job against Averon. Rubber Duck with his comm, not upgraded, so that could have been a dangerous dangerous spot. Did he have overcharge? No, he doesn't. So that could have actually been a bit of a threat to him, that band of units, if, he, if his commander was caught out of position. Could have gone down. Right, up this way, and Riel's decided he has had enough time to spam up some defences. Uh, that's probably a bad spot to sit. Putting a shield over the enemy's point defense, just letting it do its thing, and T1 PD being spammed up. Gonna need it. More, more, and this guy's gonna have a lot of fun sitting behind the walls. Of course, obsidians have a very low, very flat trajectory. The wall sections are going to do a grand old job, keeping things alive, and T1 PD is gonna mutilate. The obsidian is nice and fast. Is that a T3 P gen on the front line? Yeah, he's got T3 on his comm and he's got a T3 generator at the front. Every. S I, I, what? I mean, just what? I don't get it. You know, maybe not a 1700 rated player, but I don't get having a T3 P gen on the front line when you don't have one in your base. Maybe that's where his T3 was, no, that's where it's all the place you could put it, but uh, units here pushing up the middle as well, doing extra damage on that front. We have Alex does have a gun comm, so it can help some damage. It was a strap popped out from the UF dog just to thin out some of the numbers and thin them out, they do, but uh, still going to be a bit of action for Alex. Fair, num fair amount of T2 in that mix. Alright. Survives! Throws down a T2 shield, just going to try and keep that alive a little bit longer. And they're working on some T2 point events, which will help with the range smash over that side. And we see Alex has moved right on up, as suspected. Pushing back with his comm, and as long as he has overcharge, which he does, I just saw a fire out there, he'll be okay. And as long as he keeps moving, because of those goddamn vipers. Okay, so a big push up there. And I'd say that you're looking at Team 2 owning 60-75% of the map. Maybe not owning, but they definitely control a whole lot more of it. 
just uh, with all of this down here in the corner as well. I hear bombers. Why do I hear bombers? Because there's T1 bombers having a go at Alex. He's basically going to ignore those because, um, yeah, whatever. They're only T1. If they're T3, that could be a different story. All right, up here, and Kalashid was trying to build a defensive position with tech defense, uh, with a T3 shield, and with an, a Sam. Got T3 in his comp. Yes, he does. That's a gun shield T3 comp, so quite sturdy. Extra health from the T3 upgrade, a uh, shield to assist on that, and a uh, gun upgrade, which I think is the speed upgrade. So we can kill things faster. Not necessarily a better range, but it can kill faster. And the shield is just being whittled down by a whole bunch. Absolute whole bunch of oblivions. Not going to be much left by the time they're done. And there we go. Shields down. Mobile shield launcher down. Shield generator down. So great timing for those T1 bombs to take that out. And, um... Yeah, Kelly probably doesn't want to sit around there for much longer. Like he just built a range of these for no reason other than to waste a mass. Alright, Percival's out there for Alex, and they'll be able to help clean up all this T2 quite happily. There's a Rhino, now you see it? No, you don't. Oh no, takes two shots. Never mind, take that back. Still, it's hilarious. Massive Alpha Strike and those things, and that looked like. Oh, it's T2ID down here for having to go then. So, good times on that front. More torpedo bombers out, and uh, a lot of T1 mixed into here for Avaran. So, decoys for the slow firing Exodus destroyers, because of course we know they have a slow rate of fire and a slow muzzle velocity. So, if you can distract with frigates' as targets and have them dodging around, they will miss a lot of shots. That's a lot of DPS lost while doing so. Alright, T2 on the way for a strife. He's got one, two, and a third air factory going up, so his air production is real. That's a monkey started by Mr. Superior Catman. That's good. Very difficult thing to shift. Okay, Percy's though holding the line. They keep all this stealth going up for Rubber Duck, so gun and stealth on his commander. Wanted to cause a little bit of extra annoyance on there. There is an Omni without power around it. It's going to be using the full 2000 power, which uh, he's going to be floating off friends. He does have a T3 reactor, but he's also building from five T3 factories. No way he's running off just that. Okay. T2 ID. Because, hey, why not? Once your uh, T2 PD is out of range, T2 ID. Seems to think their tech missiles have been a problem, so that's a bunch of. Defense? Yeah, defense is, I believe, but it's um, T2ID that's going to cause an issue for you, buddy. Yeah, there we go. Ravages! I see Ravager fire. Terrible things to T2 units, along with the Percivals, but the T2ID has good range. Not quite that much range, though. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, five T2ID. And mix the lobbing the shells over and strats coming over. Oh boom! Down goes Kalashi and he had shield though, so he survived that volley and the strats run afoul of the entire air wing of strife. The UF dog maybe could have done that a wee bit better. There are Sam's on the ground as well, but uh, Kalashi cannot loiter there any longer. He has to evacuate. Just a shame he didn't have a few more strats, or maybe come from a different angle, maybe, and pull them back as they lob so they could drop some more bombs. But uh, Kalashid is going to get away and back into the green health wise. The shield is regenerating fast. T2 shells still, <laughs> Hardy shells still landing on him. Yeah, still losing health out of there. On this side, we can see. Actually, that's a sizable destroyer line now from. Everan, although still a goodly number here for Rion. And of course Rion down here is doing looks like a PD creep. So close, so close. And honestly, has he actually got engineers all the way up close reclaiming? So that tells you exactly how much point defense is here. 
uh, precisely none. There are some obsidians which are going to come on over and say, ah, excuse me, stop reclaiming. That's very, very rude. But they're going to have a bad time. They keep going because they're going to want to range off all this PD and they will get obliterated. Right, Titoridi is now launching at the plateau. And once that shield goes down, this is all going to be completely untenable. Over the side, we can hear naval battles going on. A bit of dodging would do great. But instead, we see Ryan's forces is distracted probably up here in the middle of building some stuff. But, um, T20. Come the shows, down go the NGs. Down goes the mechs, and soon down goes all the rest of it, and that'll be fine. Uh, over the side, we can see frigates pushing up to be decoys, but that's not working as the destroyers leave us to do their thing and kill them off with torpedoes while the destroyers main cannons are oh, smashing into their opponents and so navy still holding the bridge there it's got Averin plugged up in the back quite happily on this side that's a formidable force of t2 and t1 units and uh, i'd be worried if it wasn't for the fact that there's t3 T3 on the field, uh, they're not going to get a heck of a lot done, but having said that, this is a poor location to pause your units. Better drop them back before they get killed. However, I think Rion is maybe a bit distracted. He's got his comm in the middle, putting up a whole bunch of defences, and his navy on the left, which is looking pretty dire for Avaran, to be honest. There's a lot of destroyers, and how many does Averin have? Well he has had two, now he has one, and as soon as that one, yes indeedy, so T is the total amount of mass that they have accrued during the game, so you can see Team 2 has accrued a total amount of 638,000, or Team 1, I can choose total mass, I can choose total kills, and I can choose total units, so it's always good to Good to have because that's the total mess they've had over the course of the game by both income and reclaim so you can see team two is well ahead on the eco game at the moment higher income higher mass overall but uh it's led to that into a solid definite punch through anywhere sort of loitering in fact they're having issues in the navy See now the destroyers have moved right up to the factories and it's going to be a sweet fuck all left for Avaran to do except get bombarded because uh, if there's something these destroyers are really good at it's blowing up static shit on the ground and just look at that absolute demolishing hundred demolishing some cruisers do move up they want to be the front to take out the torpedo bombers maybe better that's a lot of torpedo bombers and uh they're gonna kill those cruisers off pretty damn quickly at that rate so uh i wouldn't bother sending these in they're just gonna get caught by the other air wing just let the destroyers slowly die because you've got no navy to worry about uh but make sure you kill the hq uh torpedoes will do it that's fine and look at what has been destroyed and everyone's base t3 mix is going down one there, another one back there. We see factories ready to be obliterated. It is just pain. Yeah, okay, you're gonna lose the destroyers, but he has taken out everything here. And that has dented Averone's eco quite hugely. And now Rion. He could go T3 if he wanted. I feel like he has the eco for it. He has the capacity to do it. He's got T3 mixes all over the place. And now he has navy, he can have a pause, he can have a catch up, and he can move into doing something like that. But Killer Shed has built an experimental, that's a great Galactic Colossus. Big stompy boy with a face laser. And, uh, well, you know, stompy boy gonna stomp. Maybe. Go for a wonder, but uh, if it comes up this way, it's going to take a lot of damage because oh, I've got another T3 PG in the front. What are you doing? And actually, Rion starts his own GC. Because, hey, why not? Why ever not? He's there, he's got some defenses, he's got some shields. You know, it's going to be a tough nut to crack. And the question is, is he aware that there's already a GC on the way? Have a look, and the answer is no. 
need some scouting because that little unknown radar blip there is getting closer. And in fact, here comes the scouting run as we speak. Uh, I thought they were going to go somewhere, but apparently the place they're going is over that way. Alright, there's still one flak up here doing lots of work. Killing bombers as they're coming off the conveyor belt. The bombers come over determined <laughs> to kill the flak. That is kind of hilarious. Alright. Scouting comes on over, will they pick up the GC? Well, they have now, they can see it. And the question is, is it going to be pinged by Team 1? Here lies the question, are we going to see? We all notice that. Is he going to run or is he going to stand there and take a laser to the face? Well, the answer is currently standing still. Nope, he's on the way. I think he's noticed it and he has decided, um, no. Alright, T2 idea has been redirected and his lobbing shells directly. That thing now takes a few directly to the face. But, uh, as at this point, what's an experiment done? Fat point up there for Alex. There's a, been another experimental made by Superior Catman, but everything's here at the moment. And the GC stops to kill the incomplete GC. Maybe not the best idea. That gave a time to pause. Now it's wandering into range of all of these. And you can see the health is actually just shredding off that thing. There's a lot of T2PD doing a lot of damage. Of course, they will die off pretty quickly once the GC gets in range, but it is carrying on just about out of point defense, down to 40,000 health from, well, basically 100,000 as it is. Decides, no, oh, it's carrying on. Absolutely stomped his way through this spot here and now has decided to swing away and leave the T2 units to it. Of course, off the off the coast which is gonna start bombarding in. Doesn't want to let the GC die up here where it would be a mass donation for somebody else. And is walking back. And there's the experimental, it's a monkey. So Spirit Catman has created a monkey back here and is wandering its way on up. Board base is quite solid with a number of bricks, but um fat boy. Fat Boy and Ravager. If you can get that Fat Boy up a little bit closer, it could do some serious damage to the very, very weak Cyber Shielding and as for a couple of volleys, boom, down. And now the shells start landing on those T2 ID because that is a massive annoyance to Fat Boys. T2 ID is one of the proper counters to a Fat Boy because they're very big, very slow, they're easy targets and the T2 ID outranges them. So if he can knock those down, that fat boy will be quite happy to voice her and kill things. But not much on the ground to support it. And should that's a lot of bricks. So that fat boy is actually in danger from all of these. That T2 ID survives. Alright, fat boy still there has got some extra protection around it. There's a few extra shields, there's some uh, anti-air, and actually these units have come back from Alex to assist those so some Percy's coming over. Uh, fat boy, you want to think about moving back? Can't tank that for very long. And just see what the bricks have done. The shields have dropped down, they're killing stuff off. But now there's Percival's coming over to help. And we're going to see a brick versus Percy fight that usually goes better for the Percy's. Especially when it's Fat Boy popping out some extra DPS. They're running out of bricks. Fat Boy still firing away over here. Good times. Alright, this kind of survived, and a quantum gateway has been stepped down. So, uh, Realm with this comm is still at the front. Wonder about that decision. That was another T2 factory, this time it was some tech share. So, uh, Averan had tech handed to him from, I'd say, Strife, that was a UEF factory. Looked like he was possibly the one to get some shield boats in, but uh, nothing doing, and instead. Everyone decides to control K all the factories and reclaim of the engineers to get the mess out of them before he loses it all. Alright, Torp bombers come on in again from Strife, and then there's a massive air battle. ASC is having to go at each other, and this is probably going to go better for Strife because Yurf Dog has to focus on the on the uh, Torp bombers, which distracts his ASCS, which means they will get picked apart by the larger air wing of Strife, and indeed the extra aircraft coming in from his allies. Another GC. Nope, same GC. 
walking its way up that way. I'm just going to sweep, sweep up a few things more and we see the ASCF numbers are dwindling all the way down to nothing for UF Dog. So that is air being held by Team 2 right now and these means these torpedo bombers are free to do as they please. Having said that, these destroyers are right up on the coast and they're going to start smashing out those factories there. There's no such thing as flanking damage. Um, basically, you either hit and you do damage, or you don't. Um, there's no glancing damage. Either there are some attacks that have AoE, like you see these shells here being fired from the Fat Boy. When they land, they have an explosion, they deliver a radius, so of course a direct hit does more damage, but uh, even nearby hits will cause some issues. Alright, and uh, here we go. Rion is in the water, wanting to not be on the land when that thing turns up, because he will die a horrible death of that kind. Well, the destroyers have had some fun down here. They've cleaned up that. They're killing off the engineers. No, the engineers are hover. The engineers are reclaiming the destroyers, because hey, why not? Let's just help them die over there. Yep. Fatboy has done some great damage to the GC, which now walks into range of the T1 PD and dies. Falls over, falls flat, and explodes those because they fell over on him, basically. Fat boy is good. Fat boy is coming back this way to do some more damage, and that's a spider. Out from the rubber duck, but the spider has problems in the form of course it is. Fighter bombers doing good work on that, so have this as a lesson. If you have yourself an experimental, have some anti-air power with it. Ground experimentals are notoriously bad at fending off air attacks. See how long it's taken to kill just a single T2 fighter bomber. And uh, yeah, over here we see that um, Alex has the right idea. He's got a fat boy and he's got some anti-air ground units with it. A couple of uh, cougars to help deal with that kind of thing. All right, massive push here. That's a ton of Percy's and. Uh, if they focus down that Galactic Colossus, it's going to die. I'm not even pretending to joke. That is enough Percy's to kill this thing over twice. That is a terrifying amount of Percival's. Wow. I would not want to come up against that. Not without a couple of experimentals, my word. But, uh, down here we see the monkey is dead. It died there in the air. Nothing doing on that front. Uh, a couple of loyalists do get right down into the back, but... Uh, Probably died to broadswords and broadswords. Very tough. Alright, another GC over this way from Rion, and he's just going to have a wander over. Bat Boy doing a wonders against this spot here. As soon as that. That's the only threat it has. If it could um, perhaps target that instead of the bricks back there. Let's see, great improvements. Oh, so many Percivals. It's glorious. It's wonderful. GC coming back over, it's going to be a bit of a pincer maneuver, and the spot is absolutely donezo. Alright, checking up here, how's the Navy while more destroyers coming out, and more destroyers getting mutilated by large numbers of torp bombers. Going to want more cruisers in the mix, going to maybe want to get some mobile shields, so uh, the Aeons can build T2 mobile shield grenades, which are hover, so they could float along the water, they could help provide some extra health on these. A bunch more out of there, or they could be the tech shear like um, they've done down here. Some UEF tech for the naval player to get some shield boats. That would be a good time. Alright, do see some SAMs in residence. They're going to help thin out the numbers a wee bit. Our Rion's up here just popping down some more SAMs because, of course, torpedo bombers are annoying. That's a lot of broadswords though. Broadswords are incredibly ground damaging gunships and if they see Rion, he's going to be in trouble. He's going to be in big trouble because they will be able to kill him in seconds. Like he will die, oh there's so many, so many broadswords. Will he even get in the water in time or will he die? We know he's underwater but has he been spotted by torpedo bombers? Yes he has, he's got to go in the water and out of the water because then come the torpedo bombers. He can't stay in the water because of torpedo bombers, he can't come out of the water because of broadswords. He is in a terrible pickle and there we go, the shield goes down and watch his health just absolutely dissipate. 
and Rion still up front with his commander for what reason I don't know should have been back here and his base all nicely cozy snugged and defended he even had support commanders for no reason for him to still be up the front but that is a huge blow for t he even had a donut as well oh my word he had a galactic costless he had a donut he had support commanders he had a portal he had all the navy and that looks like t3 all that echo he was absolutely oh no now oh, here we go though two gcs versus all the percivals well if the percivals would focus on the gcs they'd do a lot better at the moment they're trying to thin out the harbingers but they are not the threat the gcs are target focus is on absolutely the wrong things killing t2 units no oh, that is a waste of percivals they are not targeting the correct things and those GCs are going to survive, they're going to hoover them all up and the Percivals are just waltzing into their doom instead of firing what they need to look at them. Trying to kill Obsidians. Oh, there's a GC in their face and what happened to the fat boy with us over here? It died most likely to air. Corsair is loitering all around the place and this feels like it is kind of almost want to say snatching defeat from the jaws of victory rion had navy and we can see another fat boy up here is going to get absolutely shredded she is coming in with single pass shields down damage done and there is some manta here but not really huge amounts although the asfs do come in from uf dog and they need to clean those up but this possibly the key moment in the game at the moment this time navy is gone which means uh yeah the ward is free to just push on up and do as you will but um that gc here is going to be a huge assist on the ground this donut going to be a huge assist in the air now i'm kind of left wondering but now just have a look at the map coverage and you can see Team 2 has some very comprehensive, lots of buildings, lots of eco. Look at the air build power from Strife he's got. Was that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, sorry, 10, because that's the land factory. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah, 10 air factories. Pretty got this massive air wing compared to uh, the poultry mount there. Let's just check the numbers, I mean, come on. 134 ASS for strife compared to the 75. So UF Dog isn't doing badly, but still halfway. Got half the numbers. And there are other players in the air game as well. So a few extras here from Superior. Not gonna be great for Team 1. This is all joined up and look just how off the lines. Insane. So what you gonna do, Team One? Well, that's a scatters. That would work. If you can uh, get that up and running, that will be an absolute game changer. The uh, massive question is if, because a scatters, while it is absolutely devastating and completely obliterating, takes a shit ton of mass, a very long time, and um, Rubberduck has the worst eco of the lot. He's got plenty of mass in the storage though, so. Uh, it looks like it's going to go up fast, but it's not so much. And what can they do on the ground? Well, that's a big question. Land or something? Land or something? Ah, sorry. I just love the volcano hitting things. Um, yeah, there's a monkey down here defending the hole. Not a bad plan, but uh, hello, broadswords from the strife. How many is that? 40. 40 broadswords, oh dear, every single shot these things do is, is 100 damage I think from a single, single shell, let's just um, double check that, so they have a heavy plasma cannon, does 100 damage per shot, 250 damage per second, so it's firing two and a half times, or five times in two seconds, uh, so the, if these 40, fire something or at the same time they're going to do 4,000 damage 
have a look at the commander. Alex, who has 16,500 health, he will die in just over three seconds from all of that. In comes the heir from Yurf Dog, so he's going to try and do something, and of course the problem with that is while his ASF trying to shoot down the Volatiles, which are incredibly chunky, a very, very sturdy aircraft, his air gets wiped by Strife's air wing, and they go straight for the comm. Let's just watch the health disappear off this, once they get in range. Down it goes, look at him just melt. And they're still alive, and there we go, that's also Yurf Dog with his commander nearby, exact same thing. Uh, so that's all they've gone, that's him gone, that leaves just, um, so there he is. Rabidus com, and what can you do? You also can melt. See that shield's gone? See you later. And that is pretty much how it works.